How to educate whilst travelling with kids. Hi, I'm Lauren Selby. And I'm Jamie Selby. And we've got three beautiful kids, Jackson, Alara and Tobias. And we're currently travelling the world. We're trying to show you how to live the ultimate life by living life the way that you want to. We're doing 40 to 50 hours of homeschooling every single week with all of the children. <laughs> to everyone else listening... Um, it's hard. It, yeah. <laughs> We were doing a hybrid type learning type. We were uh, hitting the libraries in yeah, the UK. We, yeah, we, we were museums. going to the English heritage. We were using history. We were using passion to fuel the learning. Yeah. We, At the end of the day, we sat down and we got the kids to tell us what we'd done. Toby would write a story or draw pictures or whatever it was. So for us, talking to our teacher friends, they said that's enough for now. So we just also downloaded Reading Eggs. We can put a link to that. That's brilliant for us for English reading and reading, writing and maths. And Tobias has actually been teaching Jackson about Reading Eggs. So that's brilliant. But actually, it was hard. We learned that for us, we needed to get out in the morning, get up, get dressed, get out, get the fresh air. And then come lunchtime, I could do my coaching calls, Alara would fall asleep, Jackson would then fall asleep, and we were better being on the road. So I was actually trying to find an internet cafe to do the work. Mm. But then we got an internet that works for us on the road, and we were able to, I was able to do my calls whilst we were driving, because mm. the kids slept, Jamie was focusing on the road, and Toby was doing his homework. So we've been using OneNote. Toby's been drawing. This was a beach you were drawing, wasn't it? Hey, mm. that's a bit strange. It was massive, isn't it, though? So that's the sea. This so coloured sands, and then over here, we have a desert island with a lava volcano. So Tobias has been using the iPad rather than paper and pen because we can save it and we can upload it to his... I have a Google Drive but for him. But and as well in paper and pen, Jackson will rip it up. Yeah. So. But on here as well, you can change the colour of the pen to like rainbow or sand. I can show you that here. Yeah. Hold on a second. So look, you can choose whatever colour you want, and then you can make more colours. So basically, instead of us having to have lots of different pens, Toby can have whatever colour pen he wants. We've got an iPad, we've got the iPad stylus. Um, well, it's a, we've got a cheaper one. But he can draw and use whatever he wants. So if we're doing a topic on um, what we did, UK trees, what we did for the UK trees topic was we went round the campsite, we looked at different trees, we collected different leaves and different seeds and what did we collect? Seeds and conkers and all sorts. And then we yeah, I cracked my conkers open. We found because, acorns because they were still in like stuff. I went like this, smash, smash them open. I've been saving Toby's work, homeschooling. I've got Jackson Tobias. Jackson's not really doing much. I've got different downloads that I've had. Oh, I've done that. You, yeah, you drew a dog to paint by numbers. So in English, I've got various topics that he's done, words that he's learning. Toby, can you read this? So if he's not in the mood, we're not getting anywhere. So he gets to choose what he wants. When we first left school, we finished school in July and Toby'd only done um, a couple of years there. He, he loved school, he loved the people, but we were finding that he was really edgy when he got home and he was upset that he had to sit still and they didn't really know how to deal with his behaviours. So we asked for some help around does he have any special needs? And we've been assessed for autism and ADHD. Uh, now we're on a waiting list. That could take up to three years to find out what type of autism um, or who to talk to to get the right help. So we decided to take the matters into our own hands and educate him in a way that he likes. We asked the teachers if there's anything that we could do extra. How could we help at school? How could they help us? How how could we work as a team to make sure Tobias had the best education that he needed, but also managing people's expectations with how he was going to behave? Um, and since we took him out of the school on the road, he's so much calmer. And because we're not forcing him to do something, if we try to force him, like say, right, nine o'clock, you're going to do homework, it just didn't work. But come like night time when the little ones have settled down, he wants to do it. But 
Also, he's very impatient. So if he wants to do it now, now he's seen that he's drawing, he wants to draw because he's enjoying it. So we've been getting different types of books where he can color and draw and try and get that hand movement going again, keeping the um, hand movement up. When we left the school, we left at the end of um, summer. So he hasn't, you know, he was going off for the whole summer anyway. And we had um, learning on the go. We did a lot around the English heritages and things. But with Tobias himself, he likes to choose what he wants to do, whether it wants to be maths, English or science. But if we're doing it on the go, like if we go out to a restaurant, we'll ask Tobias, how much is this dish? You, know, you want that, here's your money. This is what your budget is. And this is what food you want. Can you work out the difference? How much will it cost? What change will you get from it? What else could you buy with that change? So we're constantly asking him the questions whilst we're out and about. Or if Jackson wants three sweets and he's only got enough for two, Tobias then will say, Jackson, you don't have enough money for that. You need this, this and this. As you can see, he, he flicks from one thing to another. When he's in the game, he likes the game because there's multiple things he can do and learn. But actually, when I tell him to just do one thing, he finds it difficult to sit and focus. Unless he's picked that topic, in which case, he loves to just sit and do it. He could probably sit now and draw this picture all day. Tell me what you're drawing a picture of. Another beach was bigger. A bigger beach. Mm -hmm. Is it a beach that we've been on in Turkey or Spain or Portugal? It's turtle beach. Turtle beach. Oh, is there going to be turtles on it? No. Turtle legs? No. Oh. But islands. Islands, okay. Turtles on it. But Turtle Beach had lake one side and then sea the other side, didn't they? Mm -hmm. When we left school, we didn't know what we had to do and we didn't know legally what we needed to do. So we decided to ask for help and we spoke to the, the learning authorities in the UK and we asked them for help and they basically said to us, we're not going to give you any help. You've taken your child out of school you've got to deal with the education um, and how you're going to educate him. We don't have a say on how you do it, but we do need to see evidence that you're doing it to a substantial like level. So for us, me being my background was in audit, so very high on quality control. Everything I do is based on being able to prove we've done it and how we've done it and also improve every step. So if a, a system and process wasn't working for us with Tobias's education, we would review it, Jamie and I, together as a team and with Toby and say, right, this isn't working, what else could we do and look for a better way? So we spoke to the um, learning authorities and they asked us to write a report. So we had to write a report on what we were doing to educate Tobias and how we were going to monitor his levels. So I did that in September last year and they were so impressed with the report. They wrote back to say thank you and they didn't need to hear from us for a year. But come September 2023, I now need to write a new report to say this is how Tobias has progressed and how we measure the progress is up to us, but we need to be able to show the evidence. So there's an app called Reading Eggs that we've been using and that will give me a progress report. Every time he goes up a grade or he's learned something new, he finds it difficult to manage his emotions sometimes. And at school, the teachers were finding it difficult to manage him in this situation. And I know I've got a friend that their daughter goes to brownies and one of the leaders doesn't manage the daughter's needs like she has needs like Toby, but they don't manage it very well because they don't know how to. And I think the importance of learning or homeschooling or home ed or, or world schooling, whatever you choose you're gonna do, is you've gotta find something that fits you and your child and do what's right for you. Because as we're calling this our ultimate life, we have found what works for us and we're constantly learning, we're constantly trying to improve it. We've spent a lot of time looking at world schooling Facebook groups or homeschooling Facebook groups and talking to our teacher friends to find out, you know, what should we do? And they've given some great advice, but the key for Tobias and Jackson and Alara is society and a community. 
what we're calling the ultimate life. It's the ultimate life for us. So what we what we want to do is try and inspire other people to go after the ultimate life. And live it how you, you want exactly. to. Exactly. And do what's right yeah. for you. Join us on our adventure. As we inspire you to live your ultimate life. Please like and subscribe.